How's it going, everybody? Uh, Lewis and Justin here on the Investment Realtors Podcast, episode number uh, two, really, yep, yep. Uh, of me and you together. Brought to you by Realtor Square. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we are going to talk about uh, pretty much a twofold topic here mm-hmm. best time to buy yep. and will the market crash and what would a crash look like? Well, see, and this is, you know, we get into the hypotheticals, what we like to kind of, and First and foremost, this is strictly all our opinion, what we see day to day as realtors and what we think. Um, obviously, the market has come down from pre-pandemic days yep. um, with, I guess, the biggest kind of drop being March of 22 is when we really see kind of everything is when it, it took the dive and prices were going down. Yeah, this this winter, like this Christmas season, we've seen quite a bit of uh, action mm-hmm. reducing. Mm-hmm. Uh, prices came down a little bit. Uh, obviously, mortgage rates were absolutely crazy. Well, and and so the thing is, is you know we don't like to talk politics. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. When you go from you know the Bank of Canada's basis points of zero point two five to now it's at four point two five. Yeah. I mean, it's not really fair. Obviously, life isn't fair, but all the buyers were kind of under the assumption of you know what our government said where this money is going to be cheap money and it's going to be like this for a long time to come for a long time and you know we fast forward a a year year and a half and now you've raised you know these interest rates especially people that are on variable we're not talking you know 10 20 dollars we're talking hundreds thousands of dollars that only go to interest it's not even paying down your principal so what about we have we have a client where we helped um, oh. He first got approved at one point two, uh, yeah. and and his and his his mortgage per month was in the three thousand range. Yeah. Now it's almost five thousand. Like that's not yeah. that's not chunk change, right? Two thousand no. bucks extra a month on just mortgage. Yeah. Which is mainly just interest now. It's, that's not easy. No, it's not. And especially, I mean, with any mortgage, you're mostly always paying down the interest, which yeah. is is kind of the the tough part about it. But when a lot of people who are on variable or a lot of people who have essentially overbought where, you know, we know a lot of people who bought 1.6, their house is now worth what, 1.2? You have that extra mortgage of 400,000. You can't sell your house because you're not gonna get that difference. Yeah, you're gonna you're, lose that money. You're stuck. You need to yeah. keep paying it for as long as possible or you threaten losing everything, really. Yeah. It's, it's really not, it's not a joke anymore. And that no. 1.6, with the rates at 1, 1.2, 1.6, like we can put this in because mm-hmm. we like to use, uh, yeah. if you remember our last last episode, we like to use realtor.ca, okay? So we'll just, we'll just for, for the conversation purposes, yeah. we'll go through what the difference is between, um, between the two rates and... It's substantial. It's substantial. Like it's not something to, to joke about. Uh, it's not something to, to take lightly. And anybody who's in this position, we, we really feel bad and we... Like, yeah. uh, if there's anything we could do, we would help. But at the end of the day, you're probably either locked in yep. for a three-year term. You could break the mortgage. But like Justin was saying, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell your house yep. uh, at a loss, right? It's it just it's just not feasible. So, for example, let's say you bought a house for, what were you talking about? $1.2 million, Yep. right? So 1.2. We'll do 20% down so there's no insurable mortgage. Yeah. Um, your rate was at first. I think we we well, we saw one point two was we the did. lowest. So we, saw. we like to for majority of what we seen it was like one seven five, and I mean even that people were kind of shaking a stick to it, saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa you you got chipped," and it's like when you're that was at, good. That was yeah. good. Okay, so one point two percent. Let's say you bought a house for one point two million dollars. Yes. Okay, and you put your twenty percent down, mm-hmm. like a good buyer. Mm-hmm. You had some money left over. Maybe you got an inheritance, or you sold the house. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you just had money uh, to put the twenty percent down. That was four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Which is down payment. Uh, uh, some properties, the whole purchase price. But that's, yeah, that's another video. On but another because day. we are in the GTA, yes. right? So these are pretty much what the average prices were, detached. especially during detached, especially during the big boom, right? Absolutely. So that would leave you with a seven hundred and eighty thousand dollar mortgage if you were to buy that, and at. Let's one break point, it down. At one point two percent for twenty five years of amortization, you were paying three thousand bucks a month in rent. Doable. Doable. Two people working, one person salary usually can cover it on its own. You could still, you know, live a comfortable life. 
if you bought a house where you could rent the basement out, let's then, say. Then you're laughing. You're one laughing. bedroom, 1500 and the heat would have been 2000 So really, let's say you're renting out your basement 2000 you have a mortgage of 1000 for a million dollar property, I think you're doing pretty you're good. You're doing pretty good, right? That's However, what we're let's fast forward a year and a half later, and here we are. What was the most recent one we saw? 6.5? Yeah, I think, well, and it depends. Like, there's there's A lenders, there's B lenders, and then there's, you know, private lenders. So yeah. it all comes down to, majority of our clients are A lenders. You know, they work a nine to five. They have steady T4, steady income. So they're, they're always good with, like, the big banks, yeah. Scotia, TD, RBC. So I think the last one we got, which was RBC, that we saw was 6.5. Yeah. So off the top of your head. Quick quick from, math. From 3,000 at 1.2, what do you think they're paying now just mortgage yeah. uh, at 6.5% if they're on a variable? Well, I, I know because <laughs> we've had clients that are unfortunately not, that have come to us and asked us our opinion. Why don't you kind of break it down for them? It is now a $5,225 a month just in mortgage yeah now a lot of other things went up too hydro's gone up what about your grocery bill grocery bills same have gone four up. items have jumped up god knows how much you go there you can't get as much as you used to didn't we just see an article on chicken breast yeah thirty dollars thirty dollars for four chicken breasts don't I worry mean, that was a mistake that uh, was a mistake well and then we see today uh what was a hundred dollars for a roast a roast well what about the the pandemic days where gas was what 60, 70, 80, 90 cents a liter. And we all joked back then. We should have bought a we, we have, we Yeah, we have to fill them. up. We have to fill up. <laughs> and now, fast forward, okay, they've come down a bit. Nobody knows why because it just seems to keep fluctuating. And now, I, I don't mean that ignorantly. I get it. The war in they, Ukraine. They, they tell us why. They tell us but why. It, but it, it never really makes sense. It doesn't. And so, it's, we just got to live it. it. We just live it. And unfortunately... It's the middle class that feels this. It's, you know, the mom and pop stores. It's the, the everyday, you know, mom and dad. First just, time home buyers. Just trying to make ends meet. And it's the, the home ownership's getting further and further away to, to be attainable. And it's just, it's, it's not right with how we're going with interest rates, inflation, and how we're still expected to keep going. And it's just, you have an issue? Well, like good old Canadians, we'll keep on paying. We just keep paying. Just we do it. So, so what... What do you do when you're you were paying three thousand yeah. dollars a month for a mortgage That's and now question. you're up to five point five five thousand two hundred and twenty five? Like what do you do? Well, a lot of people have a trigger rate. Um, what we recommend is you have to keep that house. You you just you gotta figure it out because in the long run, if you're selling it and you're losing it, you're gonna lose a lot more. I know it's not easy, we, we understand. But you have to figure out a way to keep it keep because house. It, it all balances out. We know this. We know that, you know, it has the, the peaks and valleys and it, it all comes full circle. It's just getting through the tough time and figuring out what it is, what you could do. Maybe you're going to have to share some rooms. You're going to have to Airbnb some rooms, get a roommate. Finish uh, your base. If yeah. you don't have a base. So if you have a basement rental, let's say you're, okay, you're renting it for 2000 bucks, Which that alleviates. At least oh, you're kind of back to where you were so i mean it kind of helps a little bit of the stress that's that's our biggest recommendation is yeah, yeah the basement apartment if you don't do it if you got to put a door yeah. i mean get it get it done professionally get your building permits yeah. get your, your fire rated make fire sure rated. it's safe there, there's no liabilities you're not putting yourself in danger you're not putting any of your your future potential tenants in danger do it properly do it right and minimize your your kind of risk. If that means you know you're just a couple in this big house, maybe you move down to the basement and rent your upstairs. Yeah, I mean, like you said, get through this time mm -hmm. because uh, from what we read, there's another increase coming at the end of the month. I think it was the 26. Well, the 26 or the 27th. They're they're going to make a number of announcements from what you know chief economics have uh, been speculating. Um, they're trying to obviously curb inflation. Um, so they're hoping that they're not going to keep raising it too, too much. Hopefully this might be the last one. I hope so. And from what we've seen, like Benjamin Tall on uh, the CIBC, the head economist, he's thinking that 23 is still going to be a little bit of rocky. We're going to still be figuring it out. Which and we love him. We saw him live. He was, he was uh, really good. Really makes, you know, numbers and figures that, that aren't really the funnest to talk about. Really enjoyable and kind of breaks down and, and dives deeper into understanding so like what we're trying to do. Yeah, we're yeah. Trying to make this, this, 
hard thing that everybody hates talking about. And that's the biggest thing. thing. It's like back in the day when you don't talk about wages. It's like, well, why can't you talk about wages? How are you supposed to know? Exactly. The employers don't want you to talk about wages because then everybody's going to be paid a fair amount. And why is he getting paid? We do the same same job. Why is he getting paid more, right? It's... It's always good to talk about this stuff. Absolutely. Right. And it's, you know, we kind of get, you know, sidetracked with when we go off on our tangents, but it really is all connected. There's the bigger picture of mortgage rates, why yeah. they're so expensive, and it's, it is it is really scary. The only thing we can recommend, you know, is get a good mortgage broker. If you're on a variable, maybe you might be able to lock in. You you know, a, a lot of mortgage brokers we speak to say that, okay, well, the, the joke's on the people on fixed because people on variable now have taken the brunt of it, but they think that it's going to balance out and it, yeah. it might work out for them in the end and won't continue to rise and then fix might be bad. But... Well, let's say let's say you, you bought in 2020. Okay. You were enjoying a good two years yeah. of an unbelievably low fixed rate. Yeah. I mean, the variable yes. rate. Yeah, right? you're correct. So... The money you save there, like, okay, so if somebody were to lock in at, like, the 2.5 or the 3 and fix, by, they didn't get to enjoy two years of a 1.2% mortgage rate. But now no. they don't have to experience the, the 6% rate. Well, but the flip side of what's terrible is that is, what about all the people on fix that are now coming up for renewal in 23 and 24? So they missed both. That And that's they where... They missed both. It, it really is, there's no crystal ball, whether it's a mortgage, whether it's buying real estate, you have to assess, just like we always talk about, your risk, what it is you want, and you just have to jump in both feet Yeah. and don't look back. I mean, it is what it is. I know that's not kind of consoling, it's not helpful, but you're not the only one, which, again, doesn't really make anything better, but it does in the sense of you just need to get through the tough times. It, history has a way of repeating itself. Yeah. I mean, you talk to our parents and they talk about 12, 17% interest rates. And I get it. It was a different time, different wages, different prices. But I mean, it is all relevant to some extent. So if somebody were to ask you, mm-hmm. is it still a good time to buy? Like, what do you what are you thinking here? Well, what we always say is people are still trying to time the market. And when you time the market, generally you kind of miss the boat. So if you can have, we always say time in the market is what's important. So we always joke, is it better to have equity you're building into your home mm-hmm. or do you want to pay more interest to the bank that doesn't really go into your pocket? Yeah. So we recommend to everyone, just like the last video, assess your risk. If you're in the spot to be able to afford it, whether it keeps going up, whether you're locked, whether you're variable, and you can afford it, get into the market. Just get into because it. what's the worry? They keep raising it. If you know that you have a, a, a trigger rate that's so far down the road and you can manage it, and even if you hit that trigger rate, you'd have other sources where, okay, now I'm going to rent out the house. I can move in with mom and dad. I can maybe roommate with my friends. We can pool our money together. Do it. Get in the market because what are the chances, for example, you have a home, okay? You wanted this particular home on the street. It comes for sale right now. Are you going to hold off on it and say, well, maybe if I wait two years, it might come back up. Well, how do you know that that street's going to come up that you want that desirable street? The price is still going to be in your Exactly. If it hits all your boxes, to us, it just seems financially more feasible to buy it. You have it. Your time in the market. And remember, in times of inflation, Mm -hmm. nothing kills your money like keeping it in the bank and not investing it. Absolutely. You don't want to just sit on money. No. Sitting on money... In inflationary periods, uh, I don't think there's an economist that'll say, even in general, yeah. yeah. I mean, the bank gives you, you lock it into a GIC. What are you going to lock it in for? 1%, 2%? Well, the the thing to, like, we've seen and what we know is to actually get, you know, you need a million dollars in the bank to pay you good dividends of, what, 50000 a year? To, which is, in today's rates, a 5%, 6%, a million bucks? Absolutely. 50 grand so 50 grand, that's not bad. But now that million dollars that's making you 50000 is that better than maybe buying two rental properties with it that yeah. are clearing the same amount in rent and after more, expenses? More. You're getting, if you break it down, if you if you buy a rental property for half a million, 500000 mm-hmm. and you're bringing in 3000 a month on rent, you're still making more than the, the 50 grand. Like, it, it's coming out of the way. And plus, you're building equity when you're doing it, too, Absolutely. right? It, just, it all comes down to your, your risk management and what you're comfortable. Obviously, us as realtors, we, we can't sell a product if we don't believe in it. That's why we believe so much in, in investments. Always. Real because we've seen it between, our, like we said, our mentors, our colleagues, ourselves. 
Buying real estate helps you to just secure a level of freedom and security that you couldn't by locking it in in a bank because there's more to it. Or relying on like government pension. Yeah. You think it's going to be there for you when it's time to retire? Chances are it's not. I mean, every prediction says whatever you're expecting to get on, yep. on your pension, old age, security, whatever it is, just expect it to be reduced when it's time. And if that's getting reduced from today's standards, mm -hmm. as the, the price of food goes up, as the price of living goes up, as the price of gas goes up, mm -hmm. that retirement pension or that retirement CPP it's not going to be enough to live off of when it comes time. You know what? Yeah. You know what's going to help you though? An investment property. And and these equity. are these are just our opinions. Like you could say the same thing. Well, how do you know that the market doesn't tank? You lose all your and that and that is very true. But in history, real estate has a, a proven track record of being the most kind of financially secure yeah. avenue. Don't especially, sell. Don't sell when it's low. It's like a no. stock. They yeah. always say never sell a stock when it's low. Never or just sell don't sell it. Pass or it. Don't sell it. Pass it down generation to generation. The biggest thing, time and market, and just getting through these hurdles because it, it will pass. It's just, it's the uncertainty, like everything else in life. Right now, we don't know how much more it's going to go up. You don't know how much more you could endure. You don't know how much more you can pay for gas. You can yeah. pay for food. But if I you mean, can do it now, do it. Do yeah. it. Stuff like Figure that. it out. If, if you have to, fool with your friends. I think as a society, we're, we're so kind of set in our ways of trying to do things on our own and and no, I want my own money, but there's nothing wrong with everybody making money together and yeah. everybody staying above board and, and helping each other out. I mean, that's what it should be. Go, go three ways or four ways into an investment property. Do what you have to do. You trust your family, your brothers, your cousins, and, and just go in because mm -hmm. you're splitting, what, what do we always say? 50% of something. Something's better than 100% of nothing. Absolutely. That's that's what we always say. And, and it's it's tough and a lot of people we talk to they just refuse and they just say oh the piece of the pie is not big enough well but if you're not eating any piece of pie i would rather a sliver than nothing personally <laughs> but you know again this is our opinions this is what we think okay um, another question for you um your approach to buying a house or putting in an offer on a house yes in a buyer's market versus seller's market so if it's a buyer's market and the list price is a million mm -hmm. what are you looking to go in at Versus if it was a well, million dollars in the course. seller's market. Yeah, you, so you don't want to insult people. I mean, it is the name of the game. It's yeah. negotiating. I mean, seller's market. The sellers had, you know, a good year and a half run where it was, they were getting hundreds of thousands over asking. No home inspections, no conditions. It was, you buy this house or uh, we're moving on to the next buyer. So now it's the flip side. We see a lot of conditions for financings, as it should have always been. Yeah. Inspections. Especially inspections. We love inspections. Yeah. Because so you never know. We don't like to just kick tires. Like, we like to still pull market analysis. We like to look at comparables. We also want to understand that you don't want to insult either or. So, you know, people will say, oh, negotiating, no, like one side has to get get a better deal or that's not negotiating and the other side sucks. Generally, if the buyer's happy and the seller's happy, it's, it's, a, good good, deal. it's a good deal. It's a good deal. So at a house at a million, if we pulled comparables, you know, and the last house sold last month at 900000 well, that was 900000 last month. We're in a declining market. So then we would figure out the percentage from last month to this month on the 900000 Well, how much now did it go down from that month? And we would go in at a respectable kind of... In that range. In that range. In that range. And explain to the buyer's agent, which they would know, and the seller, or sorry, the seller's agent and the yeah, seller, yeah. the expectations of, listen... In a declining market, just because that comparable we use at nine hundred thousand, well, your house is now sat for a month. Now it's less than nine hundred thousand. And the flip side to the buyers. So if you bought a house, you know, in a seller's market at nine hundred thousand last month, if it's gone up five ten percent, well, it's another tack that on on the nine hundred thousand. It, it is what it is. That's yeah, it that's is the difference is. on on the markets. Um, so don't, basically what you're saying, don't be afraid. Don't follow, be afraid. Don't insult people. Don't insult people. Follow follow what the market says the yeah. house is worth. Within reason. Within and I mean, reason. sometimes people will give away their motivation, which isn't good. Obviously, if you know a seller has to sell, you're probably going to kick a little bit of tires. But you would hope that the seller's agent, well, not that you wouldn't hope, because as a buyer, you would want to well, we're, Yeah, we're working for the buyer. But... The seller's agent has a responsibility to his exactly. sellers to not give away the farm. Exactly. And this is why we always are, are always weary on people that use the listing agents because they're double dipping. At the end of the day, the selling agent 
their responsibility is to get the seller the most amount of most money. money. The yeah. cherry duties. They can uh, they can represent you as a client. They can represent you uh, in the transaction as a buyer, but they're ultimately hired by the seller, and that's their first and foremost like responsibility. responsibility. That's, that, that, that's it is what it is. They're there to serve them. But people start thinking about commission and they cutting. But that's well, we'll talk about a separate. That's another episode. Yeah. Commission cutting and commissions on another episode. Yeah, yeah. So all right, that seems uh, that's our topic for today. Buyer versus seller market is the market going to crash? Yeah. What to do when you're putting in an offer yeah. in a buyer versus seller market? And uh, this was your uh, investment realtors podcast. Realtor Square, Realtor Realtors Square. times two. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, we're gonna send. We're gonna put in a link. Like, even if you just want to get together, Zoom, phone call. Yeah. We're always we're an open book. We're here to provide value. We're we're straight shooters in the sense of we won't lie to you. We tell you how it is, and that's just us. That's what's gotten us to where we are today. Yeah. Comment uh, anything you want to hear or any advice you have for us in the comment section, and we'll see you next time, guys. Have a good one, guys.